We're going to talk about uh, Vauban now. <laughs> Willie Mullins, Ryan Moore, <laughs> he won the Breeders' Cup last night, was it? Oh, it's, uh, he's just a freak. He's, he's an world, absolute world's freak. Best. And if um, you can go and watch that ride on, on Auguste Rodin to win the Breeders' Cup turf, one yep. of the rides of the season. For um, sure. Mick Price said about the horse, Tom, Tom said this, uh, I've just written down the quote, it's a 3,200 metre race and he will be the toughest, fittest, soundest horse uh, on the track. Um, I also, after his last win, um, David Casey, who's the travelling foreman, uh, answered a question, or the uh, question to him was, did you have any worries uh, at all dropping down to a mile and a half? Um, and then basically goes on and says, uh, no, uh, didn't have any problems dropping down. But obviously the 3200 is exactly where the horse wants to be. So um, what are we doing with Vauban, gents? Tom, I'll start with you. Uh, he's my on topper. Whether I want to dive in if he gets to 350 or not. 420, I'm actually happy to take the price, mm. um, which he is now currently on the, the betfair.com.au market. Uh, Clearly on top of it, he's betting Absurd by seven and a half lengths, and I think Absurd's second pick, so you've just naturally got to have him in the mix. He draws mm. well. Ryan Moore, barrier three, gets all favours. He'll be up on speed. He'll be strong late. Just ticks so many boxes. No issues. Good track. He just is he's, he's a box ticker, and he's deserved favourite. Uh, I want to ask Hawk this. We've got the best jockeys in the world here. Ryan Moore, Zach Purton, Joe Marrera. We've just touched on the last three or four horses. Who, who are the best three jockeys or five jockeys in order in this race, Falk. There you Ooh, go. That is a Maybe you can have one. a think about that while he talks about Vaughan. I think I'll have to, please. Um, do that. Yeah, well done to Tom for finding the favourite in the Melbourne Cup. That's, uh, <laughs> and you're with me. Um, yeah, I mean, from a betting point of view, I'm backing... Oh, I've already backed um, the stable... Uh, what's it called? Absurd. Absurd, yep. just because of the price differential. Yep. We're going to see that close on race day. Uh, we have a different... Um, betting dynamic this year compared to last year with what happened um, with a couple of, you know, with a new WSP into the market mm. and some, some wild promotions getting around. And that did have a big impact on the market um, mm. early on. And we saw, the, we saw what happened as we got closer to jump time. Um, so we, we don't have that variable this year, um, but invariably these, uh, these well-credentialed international runners that settle close to speed will be supported. I want, to, I want to talk about the market because last year, Doville Legend carried so much more money from the UK and the beauty of Betfair is it's a world pool. So people in the UK, when they wake up tomorrow morning and Tuesday morning, they will have invariably look at these two runners. Mm -hmm. They might see that Vorban beat the other UK runner absurd, the stable mate by seven and a half lengths and pile into this horse like they did Doville Legend. So really interesting from a betting perspective how how they react to this. I, th I think the one thing too, just quickly, is that um, Racing Post, especially, which is obviously a viable for so many over there, uh, they've been just saying for weeks, and, and a lot of their top uh, tipsters and their, their, their shrewdest tipsters have been saying, um, Vauban's a good thing, just get on, just get yep. on, just get on. And I reckon you might see that start to play out in the market, mm. in, as you say, when, the, when you get to Monday morning, um, Breeders' Cup's over, They've turned their attention to, to Melbourne. I think that you'll start to see that come. So I think if you are wanting to get on both, take band, the 420 take now. Take the 420 now, or be playing it sometime this afternoon because I think that that market is likely to firm. Yeah, yeah. fascinating. I, I'm curious, just quickly, Hawk, to talk about what the negatives are of the horse. Um, does he need to control the race to to be in the finish? Um, what if you have a horse that goes helter skelter out in front, like Twilight Payment, uh, and just burns them all? Do you think? Obviously, Ryan Moore's going to chase. Uh, look, I don't think it's a, a, that much of a concern, um, especially when you consider some of those those jumps races that he's been in, where he's had to uh, had to chase like that. You know, you, you'll have often things go out um, mm. at, at pace, and uh, you know you've got to keep your horse under control, and then and then they've got to chase from there. Um, so no, look, I don't I don't think that's a concern. Um, I think he, ideally he'd probably have something to chase. I don't think he'll want to be. Um, I don't think he'll want to be stuck down the inside. I think he'll want to, to try and get him off the fence. He'd probably be happy if there was something that sort of opened up a little bit that allowed him the opportunity to get off the fence and ensure that he's got a clear passage from about the, the 800 and, and allowing him to build from there. But um, no, look, I mean, uh, Tom's right. He ticks so many boxes. I mean, I think even people who are saying he's a hurdler, or he's just a hurdler, that two-mile hurdle... Uh, form at the moment in the UK and Ireland is very strong. Um, there's a horse over there, Constitution Hill, who if you haven't seen him, yeah. he would, I reckon he'd win a Melbourne Cup by open lengths. He's yeah, a, he's, I reckon he's the best two miler in the world. Um, also disciplines a horse to settle and... Exactly. It, it, it gives them the opportunity to, to learn those few things that means that they, they come here pretty tough and hardy. Um, Answer know. my question now. 
Yeah, I was thinking <laughs> J-Mac. Um, number one? Uh, oh, if, we're going, on. if we're going number one, I'd say, look, the way Ryan Moore's riding at the moment, I have to have him number one. J-Mac at his best, number two, although uh, is he riding at his best at the moment? Probably probably not, but he's, he's not far yep. off. Um, he's still winning derbies and Cox plates. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Although I'm sure the Hayes wish that uh, they've yeah, both gone the other right. way. Um, I, I think, personally, I'd have Purton in three. Yep. Um, Marrera's, Marrera in four. I think Marrera is more of a field jockey, whereas Purton just can read a race so well and is just so good at, at analysing. And I, I see McDonald's is, is more of a percentage man. Yep. He plays the percentages more than, say, a National River. If I had a... Fifteen dollar shot. I put Nash on instead of J Mac. And do you know what? I, I, if I've got a horse that I know I'm going to be sending forward, no horse, no jockey I'd rather have on than, than Nash. He's yep. just so good in the finish. So Where strong. does Zara fit in? Uh, well, that was I was going to say. Zara's probably five. Um, yep. Doyle, uh, uh, Holly Doyle, I'd have just below yep. Zara. And, and to be frank, talking of form, the way Mark Zara's going at the moment, you'd probably have to elevate yeah, him right up. Him. He's riding like a man possessed. Any opinion? No, no. The best <laughs> jockeys are the ones that ride the horses that you back that win. Yes. <laughs> good call. Uh, just quickly. So on they're no good. None yeah. of them. They're all equally talented <laughs> and brave professionals. Just quickly on uh, Vorban's odds, 420 on Betfair. I just implore punters to, to make sure that they're having a look at the Betfair exchange and having a look at the odds and what the market is doing. Currently, Tab 330, Sports Bet 330, Points Bet 340, Lads 340, 365, 320. So you're getting a pretty significant price advantage. Uh, probably one other thing that will impact that price too, Carl, I think. We saw him... It's when you open your wallet. The car. <laughs> I did that on Absurd before I walked in. Um, we saw the horse, uh, his condition at prior to that gallop at Flemington. He yep. was up and about, a little bit sweaty. I'm not sure if that's just him. That's um, there, will be a, there will be um, yard watchers that will have an opinion on, on them pre-race. Um, do you know any history there of what no, he's... No, that, that I agree completely is a concern. Um, that, and that's probably my main concern with him. Um, I will be wanting to get up to, to the pre-parades at Flemington to see him. Um, they don't do any of that in, in, in the UK. It's all behind closed doors. They don't have to deal with the crowds there, which being the favourite that he is, um, you're going to get crowds outside his stall. He's going to have to... Mm. You know, and yep. If it is a warm, yep. humid day, again, he's used to racing uh, through British winters. Chances are you're about to lose. For free and confidential support, call the number on the screen or visit the website.